everybody. Welcome to the Fire It Up with CJ show. We are in part two talking to Chris Holmes about her book, Ignite Your Career, Strategies and Tactics to Unleash Your Potential. So welcome back, Chris. Thanks so much. Okay, so um, we were talking about, um, I, I wanted to talk to you about one thing that's always really hard. You decide to leave your company, either in like a graceful way or you're laid off or you have a fight with your boss you know (laughs) how do you resign in in a good way and even if it wasn't a good way how do you reposition yourself or how do you handle that whole scenario because sometimes you know bosses aren't great and you have to leave um so or you did not such a great job and you actually know it and you want to move on to something else So um, the first thing I will tell you is the world is a small place. Um, And I I do not believe putting anything negative on social media behooves you. I don't believe um, bad mouthing employers behooves you. I don't even, I'm not even a big believer on Glassdoor. I mean, if you want to put something in without a name, on Glassdoor because you want other people to know if a company really is not great, that's okay. But I would never put your name on it. I just think, why do it? Yeah. Um, In a normal scenario, uh, first of all, you should never tell people you're leaving until you resign to your boss or to HR. Mm -hmm. Um, The only exceptions are likely you're going to have to tap one or two people for references. Mm -hmm. And, and you do that with, you know, asking them to keep it confidential. Okay. So when you go to your boss or HR, whoever you're going to go to, you have a written letter, a very simple one. You just say, hey, you know, the first part is this serves as my official resignation as of this date. My last day will be two weeks from now. Mm-hmm. The second paragraph is whether or not you had a good experience, I want to thank everybody, you know, for everything, you know, I've made very good friends, I've learned a lot, and I so appreciate my time here, I wish you all the best, boom, over and out. Mm -hmm. Um, When you meet with them, you know, I'm a big believer, especially if you had a a good experience there, and you think they might try to counter offer you, that you want to go to them and say, "I I have good news and I have bad news. Um, the, the bad news is I'm going to be leaving the company and here's my mm-hmm. offer. The good news is I've gotten the job of my dreams. I've, you know, I've gotten the job of my dreams that takes me closer to home, that moves me into the category that I'm passionate about. You, you hang it on some personal thing and you say to them, you know, while I'm really disappointed to be leaving because I love the company and I love my time here, I'm really excited for this new chapter of my life. But and Chris, we'd of, really, is there anything we can do to change your mind? We would love for you, you to stay. And I so appreciate that. And, and I, I really thank you. But out of respect for you, please don't counter offer me. Don't waste your time because this is the right decision for me personally and professionally. I wish you would have told me earlier, Chris, because I feel like I, you're kind of, this is coming from La Field and I really don't know what to say to you. I mean, why didn't you come to me earlier to tell, to have me create a counter offer before? Well, because this isn't about money and this isn't about the job. This is a personal decision and there's nothing you could have done. You were not in Austin, Texas, where my family is and the company's not going to so understand this isn't anything about the company. This isn't anything about you personally because I have loved working for you. This is about a need to take care of my family but also advance my career. Got it. So, okay. Love so that. So that's, that's what you want to do. You know, they're, they're always going to be hurt a little bit. But if you explain it that way, they're going to also be like, I get it. I'm really disappointed. But I'm also really excited. Okay, got it. And then what about the, we have to lay you off, or um, we're going to have to fire you, we'll allow you to go gracefully, but we really, it's not working for us, Chris. Then, I mean, how, how does one negotiate this so that they're in good standing for the next job? Yeah, that that is a much tougher one. Yeah. And I think that with that one, um, I think one, there should be some soul searching. Mm-hmm. Um you know, on your own side of 
was it a not a good fit culturally or did you not deliver i also might really you know ask your boss you know say look this is very disappointing and yet i want to learn from this mm -hmm. what can you share you know what should i be doing differently in the future mm. what what were the real issues you had and and what if i were your brother or your sister what advice would you give mm. me mm. Mm. yeah because you know, if that happens once, sometimes it's a culture thing, but if it happens over and over and over, I think sometimes people really have to take a hard look in the mirror mm -hmm. and it might be a wake up call that okay. either they could be in the wrong field, you know, they could have what I call FOMO, fear of missing out. Mm -hmm. And they could be trying, you know, as you and I talked about aligning your strengths with your job, they could be just playing the wrong game where their mm. strengths don't align with their job because maybe their friends are in this field or their siblings or their family is. And maybe they need to take a step back and really assess what am I good at mm. and completely shift fields. Mm. Or maybe they need to adjust um, their behavior or their attitude or their work ethic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love it. So I want to talk about the strengths in the next segment and then yeah. also kind of how you follow that up with the other pieces that are part of recruiting. Yeah. Um, I want to ask another question, which is always really hard. So you, you have this yeah. thing, it goes up in flames and you're trying to ask for references now. And there's yeah. always this like, I'm really worried. What if they call my boss? Um, and what should I, who should I write for my references? Is it weird that it was like two years ago? These are the questions I get. What are your thoughts on that? Um, so you don't want to give a reference that's going to give you a name that's going to give you a bad reference. Just be right. Ready. Yeah, clear. Yeah. Um, and, and two years is not that long ago. So that's not a big deal. Okay. Um, and, and, you know, I think it, it, if it was a really bad culture fit, um, you know, at times it's okay to say, you know, my stint there was short because we didn't, you know, it was not a good culture fit. You know, the company operated this way and our values did not align. Hmm, okay, so, I like that. And, and for that reason, I just departed to look for my next opportunity. Right. Okay, good. Um, That's nice. That's a good, nice way of saying like, so why did you leave after six months? You know, so it's like right. a very nice, elegant way of saying just different values. Right. Like it. And, and then your references go back a time and they're still very good and the other ones are very good. So I think there are ways to manage it. And I don't know about you, but I certainly have worked for a boss from hell who would not have given me a, a good reference. We all have. Yes, absolutely. I definitely not have. I have had many bosses from hell. Um, yes. <laughs> and so, very few good ones, sadly. Um, <laughs> But that's another book. Right now we're talking about Ignite Your Career Strategies and Tactics Unleash Your Potential. And in the next part, we're going to be talking about how to actually align your strengths, which you talked about before. We have from talking to Chris Holmes, Ignite Your Career. Thank you so much. Absolutely.